first up has to be Daryl Henderson. So with uh, the traumatic torn Achilles for Cam Akers, really thrust Daryl Henderson into the spotlight this season. Um, it really sucks because yeah. Aker, Akers was going to be one guy that yeah. he's basically going in the top 10 of drafts. Yeah. Um, and, and now that he's hurt, all of See a sudden later. you have, yeah, you have Daryl Henderson who is, you know, not going in the top 10 of drafts and it's a running back. So, and I'm not going to say that Cam Akers is easily replaceable, but all of a sudden there's just like no love for Daryl Henderson, which is somewhat confusing. Yeah, I, uh, I don't agree with it at all. Personally, I think Daryl Henderson has the potential to do great things this season. Um, we just did a mock draft, a mock draft. If you haven't listened to our mock draft podcast, he actually was the first pick in round four. So um, I think that that is a huge value right now. Uh, and that was on Sleeper. Also, shout out to Sleeper. Uh, but Daryl Henderson averaged. Just over 10 touches per game in 2020 uh, finished with 700, just over 780 yards and six scores. Cam Akers was a day two draft pick for the Rams. You know who else was a day two draft pick? Daryl Henderson. Like they have very similar pedigrees and draft, you know, draft value for that team in that regard. The Rams were seventh in run plays per game last season. And Alex, I have a fun challenge for you. Can you name two other running backs on that team other than Daryl Henderson and Cam Akers? Uh, I wrote them down, so but I would have failed because <laughs> I, 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 I did the same thing as you where I went to the depth chart and I was like, all right, who could possibly replace Daryl Henderson? And the answer is these guys. Xavier Jones, Jake Funk, Ooh. Raymond Jake, Kali, Jake Funk, what a name, and the Funky Bunch, and Otis Anderson Jr. So I'm just saying, Daryl Henderson has got 20 touches staring him in the face. Easily. It's I really possible. do think that. Malcolm it's Brown really isn't there. Cam Akers yeah. is done for the year. It's Daryl Henderson's show. Easily. Like the yeah. beginning of the fourth for him, I think is crazy value. We think that that uh, position or that offense is going to look better with Stafford at the helm. I don't know why more people wouldn't be up on Henderson. I would anticipate his ADP to climb, honestly. Yeah, it wouldn't be surprising that that happens. Again, to your point, he was 31st in carries last year, 31st in, in rushing yards in a, in a very split backfield. Yeah. Right. And I mean, Cam Akers had seven more carries and one more yard than him last year. So just those two, you smush them together. That's 290, 280 carries, 1,250 yards. Yeah. That's fine. And like you just said, there's nobody else there. No, there's so, nobody there. It's, I just, people are down on him because he's not Cam Akers. But guess what? You know what? Honestly, maybe it could have been it could turn out better than Cam Akers would have anyway, because Cam Akers would have still had to occasionally acquiesce to Daryl Henderson. Daryl Henderson yeah. doesn't have to acquiesce to anybody. It's true. Y they're not going to take him out to put in Jake Funk. I don't think so. Anyway, I understand that Daryl Henderson's only five, eight, 208 pounds, but still like. That's not that's it's on the smaller side from a height perspective, but that's not that small from a weight perspective for uh, today's NFL running back. And he is just as shifty as anybody else in the league. So I'm up on Daryl Henderson. I do not think that he should be drafted in the fourth round. I think he's probably a mid to high third round draft pick uh, mm -hmm. at this point, um, just because of workload. Uh, guys that got drafted ahead of him or went before him in our mock draft include Josh Jacobs, Chris Carson. I would take Henderson over the both of them. Uh, DeAndre Swift went in front of him. I would take Henderson over him too. So I really think he should be going towards the middle and front of the third round and not at, not, uh, at the beginning of the fourth where he did for us. 
Yeah, especially because essentially what you just named off um, were some running backs that are going to be splitting time potentially, right? Yeah. And I, it, fantasy is really all just comes down to his opportunity, right? These guys are professionals. They're going to produce. That's why they're at that level. And it's whoever gets the most opportunities is going to give you the most points. Daryl Henderson's going to have the most opportunity. So seems kind of logical, right? Boom, bow, kachow, get you some Daryl Henderson. All right. Do you do, do you think just kind of randomly here with Sean McVay running the ball the seventh most times? Yeah. In in football last year, you th- you would expect that number to go down at least a little bit, right? With Stafford, because you're going to assume they're going to pass the ball a little bit more uh, instead of Jared Goff being there. Honestly, one thing I think that might happen. Yes, the short answer to that question is yes. The long answer to that question is. I think t- it'll be a little bit difficult to truly measure Stafford's impact when you couple it with the Cam Akers loss, because I think Cam Akers is better suited to be that three down back and early that's down fair. bruiser and goal line, goal line back than somebody that's 5'8", 208 pounds. So I think that they might end up throwing any more just by virtue of that. But the answer was yes, regardless. I just think now it might even be a little bit more exaggerated. So get you some staff. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I would also say that just a friendly reminder, this is Daryl Henderson's third year in the league. The first year he sat behind Gurley and last year he was splitting time essentially. Yeah. So it was, injured. you know, he, yeah, he, he knows that offense inside and out uh, with having been there for three years. And so there's no reason to not think that he won't be extremely productive um, and given the opportunity to be a three down back versus where he probably wasn't going to get that chance. And again, Xavier Jones, Jake Funk, Raymond Colias. Yeah. And I mean, just to reiterate, he finished with almost 800 yards on just over 10 touches a game like that. He's going to have close to 20 touches a game. So it's possible. I he could definitely be flirting with 12, 13, maybe flirting with 1400 yards, could be flirting with double digit touchdowns. So I'm just saying that's a hell of a value for a guy going right now at the beginning of the fourth round. Yeah, and that and he's a name that you don't think is super sexy, right? It it just no, doesn't it's not it, he's it just, five eight. It, yeah, it just doesn't have the, the luster to it. It's just quantity. And the, the quality might be there too, but it's purely just a quantity play. Yeah. I, I, the only thing I would say is I wouldn't be surprised if maybe one of those backups finds a way to carve out like a goal line role. That, that would be the only thing that wouldn't surprise me because he is 5'8". But I think he would still be on the field much like a Tariq Cohen type. Yeah, I, don't know. I mean, it, hard to tell. Uh, they're not, I'd be surprised if they even play him in the preseason. He didn't play the first week of the preseason just because they they basically have to get him there healthy. Right. Uh, they, they don't really have a choice at this point. Whoa, didn't see you there. You can't sneak up on me like that. I'm sorry. I was just making some trades. How about you hit that subscribe button? I'll show you what it was. <laughs>